Jacob Willoughby. I'm still a vice president of research at Red Cloud Securities, and, as well as an analyst. I'm very pleased to be uh, hosting this company that we're having now, which is Monarca Minerals. Uh, we have with us Carlos Espinosa and Michael Smith, and I'll pass over to you guys now to tell us about the company. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nico. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Carlos Espinosa. I'm president and CEO of uh, Monarca, Monarca Minerals. I'm excited to, to, to spend some time with you um, talking about our projects in Mexico. Um, due to the short time we have to, to, to present, I want to go quickly on the few slides that we have. Um, just a small pause here to mention, we have three assets in Mexico, two in, in the state of Durango and one in the state of Chihuahua, gold and silver assets, uh, very promising. We have a, a, a great assets there, and we are having a, a, a drilling program for one of those. And I'm not going in much detail because uh, today, uh, Mike Smith, who is our executive VP of exploration and QP, is uh, joining us on the call. And he's going to do the, the real technical presentation and just taking a couple of minutes to, 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 to introduce you. Um, I'm going to flip this uh, capital structure. I'm sure you're going to have access to the presentation and we can have any, any future um, Q&A um, to solve any question you have. But I prefer to pass the mic at this point to, to, to Michael um, and, and, and let him to tell you about our story and our projects in Mexico. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining our presentation here. Uh, as Carlos alluded to, we have two uh, projects uh, in Mexico that are located in the state of Durango. They are projects that have been in the portfolio for a number of years. We have the Tahaman project, uh, which is about a two-hour drive from Durango City, where we have a resource of almost 29 million ounces at 45 grams per ton. Uh, the drilling that was done in 2004 to 2007 was focusing on surface heap leach open pitable style mineralization and what we have re realized is that there are high grade feeder veins that we want to follow up on so we hope to get in quickly and advance that project through drilling. The San Lucas project is uh, very close to the Tahaman project. Uh, it's uh, located an hour or two, about an hour north of uh, Durango City. Uh, importantly, it's very close to Argonaut Gold's San Agustin complex where mine construction is uh, present. We can stand on the outcrop up at San Lucas and see the project about four kilometers to the north of us. The San Jose project is a new project in the portfolio. It's something that was put together in the last uh, two or three years. It's a six, approximately 6,000 hectare property in uh, the state of uh, Chihuahua, very close to the, the border with New Mexico. It's only about 30 kilometers north or south of the, Mex of the New Mexico border. It's in a very safe and easy place to work in Mexico. And it's very conveniently located. It's located about a two hour drive west of El Paso, Texas or Juarez, Mexico. So it's easy to get to as all, all of our properties uh, have good access into the areas. None of our projects are in very steep mountainous terrain so we don't have to deal with those sorts of conditions. Next slide, please. The San Jose project, as I mentioned, is located very close to the border with New Mexico. Also, it's very close to Peñuelas' Bismarck mine. It's about 50 kilometers to the southeast of us. It's a mine that has been in operation uh, at a rate of 2,500 tons per day since the 1990s. <coughs> We entered into an agreement to acquire the San Jose property directly from the owners for a total cost of $150,000 for 100% interest. There is a 2% NSR with the property that at a later date, if we choose to, we can buy half of that for $100,000. So it's a very low cost uh, entry into acquiring that asset. The mineralization in San Jose is associated with SCARNs. Uh, that express themselves at the surface uh, and they very importantly the scar mineralization is associated with three different phases uh, with a multi-phase intrusive complex the latter phase being diorites which has produced the mineralization that we see in the area uh, historically the product there are basically no significant production on the property there are a couple of short shafts and some surface scratchings and no drilling has ever been done on the property so we did uh, surface mapping over about a three kilometer strike length of the main area the obvious area of mineralization where the old mining activities were conducted and decided to do a geophysical survey, uh, which produced a, a magnificent results, which is the focus of our drilling program to come later on this year. Next slide, please. 
the San Jose project is, as I mentioned, very close to the Bismarck mine. Uh, we see lots of analogy between the mineralization and San Jose to what uh, was occurring at the Bismarck mine. Uh, we don't uh, obviously have exactly what you see in the cross section, but it's an exploration model for us. And what's important to see there is the significant mineralization, which uh, the original resource is 12.8 million tons at 52 grams silver and 11% zinc. Uh, that's about 350 gram per ton silver equivalent but it is primarily a zinc producer with a significant silver credit. And it manifested at the surface with very thin areas of mineralization, very much like what we see at San Jose. In the 90s, Paniolas did a, drill, a, a geophysical program. They did MAG and IP, discovered significant anomalies and drilled out the resource that I referred to. So we see a lot of analog compared to the Bismarck mine and what we see at San Jose. The difference is at San Jose, we see much higher silver and gold grades at the surface. Uh, as compared to the Bismarck mine. So what we see at the surface, I think, is leakage of something fairly large at depth. And a subsequent slide will show you the IP work, which indicates uh, sulfide mineralization at, uh, at depth. Uh, and the magnetic anomaly is also associated with the IP anomaly on our property. We do have, multi, as I said, multi-phase intrusive rocks. The latest, latest phase uh, are diorite dikes, which are striking northeasterly. And it's produced endoscopic scarn, exoscarn, jasperoids, uh, some fairly significant mineralization over a three kilometer strike length at the surface. Next slide, please. And so this slide shows our land position on the right. It's a large concession block approaching 6,000 hectares. The area where the oval is is where we did our IP, uh, our geophysical work, uh, which is the obvious uh, mineralization expressed at the surface. Uh, we did uh, initially before the geophysics 167 chip channel samples uh, at surface and we got grades up to nine and a half grams per ton gold. That was in a, about a two meter thick garnet scarn vein. Silver grades up to 250 grams per ton and base metal grades. Uh, the geophysics uh, was, is, is critical to what we, what we have at the San Jose project. In the lower left-hand corner, you see uh, 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 an aerial view uh, image of the IP work. The red and pink areas are very strong IP anomalies indicating sulfides, we believe, at depth, and that constitutes our main drilling. Uh, we expect to go in and drill about 10,000 meters of drilling in an initial pass over the three kilometer strike length of the IP anomaly, which extends off of the survey area to the southeast. So there's more mineralization to the south, but we haven't got any geophysics to fully understand it. Uh, the slide to the right of that, the magnetics, uh, clearly shows two areas with significant magnetic anomalies. One is larger to the southwest. We believe that's a very intrusive. That's where we have uh, at the surface northeast striking diorite dikes and a smaller mag anomaly to the north. And if you compare the magnetic signatures with the IP work, you can see the classic case, which is very typical in many systems like this, of uh, indications of a in mineralizing intrusive and then surrounding and above uh, those mineralizing intrusives are uh, is mineralization, which expresses as a strong IP anomaly which we believe is significant sulfides. Again, one of the critical things we see here is we see significant gold and silver grades. So I suspect we're going to have very strong silver mineralization as well as gold mineralization associated with what I believe are scarns and carbonate replacement deposits at depth. And in fact, the southern magnetic anomaly could be a, a very porphyry system with the hydrous retrograde alteration overprinting the mineralization in the area. It's a classic signature of porphyry related mineralization. Next slide, please. The Tahaman project, as I mentioned, is the only project where we have a resource. We have 20 million tons at 45 grams per ton for a total resource of just under 29 million ounces. It's 100% owned property. Uh, it's very convenient. It's easy to get to. There's a lot of infrastructure in the area. And the mineralization uh, is uh, open at depth in uh, both the Los Montos portion and the Cerro Prieto portion of the deposit. And if we go to the next slide, we can see uh, the kind of mineralization uh, and the drilling that was done. Um, we have high-grade feeder veins, as I mentioned, um, and that's what we're going to be focusing on in the near term. Los Montos is the southern portion. You can see the drilling pattern, uh, the drill holes that were done. The deposit is open to the south and to the east, and at depth in the high-grade feeder veins, which strike northeasterly through Los Montos. The Cerro Prieto project uh, portion of the project is a northeasterly striking high-grade feeder vein uh, with significant assays. And you can see some of the assays in the lower left-hand side of this slide. Uh, where 
where this is the drilling that was done uh, between 2007, 2004 and 2007. And the mineralization is very high grade in places, but very importantly, uh, the mineralization that was drilled was all shallow. They were looking at open pit potential uh, for lower grade mineralization. The mineralization that we see uh, at uh, the uh, Tahaman project is very similar to Coors Rochester mine in central Nevada, where they are doing open pit uh, mining and heap leaching uh, with an average grade going to the pad of about 20, 22 grams per ton. So we're seeing grades in Tahaman uh, of almost double that. But we do want to focus on the high grade feeder veins uh, where we have uh, grades up to almost 1500 parts per million silver with 5% combined lead zinc. There are several high grade feeder veins that have been drilled in Los Mantos uh, and we also see the same thing in Cerro Prieto. So as soon as we uh, can get in there we'll start uh, doing additional drilling in the area to confirm the high grade feeder veins. Also the metallurgy was very favorable that was tested. Again this work was focused on heat leaching of the lower grade material and we see recovery recoveries between about 50 and 70 percent historically on the test work that was done. So uh, if we can work things out there uh, and, and we could end up with uh, something that would be open pitable and heap leachable, but we are focused on the high grade feeder veins at this point. All of the mineralization is in volcanics and we suspect that what we could have is where those high grade feeder veins come up to the base of the volcanic section, we could have significant ponding effects and mantle like deposits at the base of the volcanic section. Next slide, please. The San Lucas project uh, is located very conveniently from Durango City, only about an hour and 15 minutes to the north. Uh, as I mentioned, it's very close to Argonaut Gold San Augustine project that is under construction. And we have an area of mineralization with northeast trending shear zones. Uh, the land package that we have there is a bit chopped up, but we have access to being able to deal with the sole owner of surrounding concessions who has expressed interest in doing a deal to expand our land position there. Uh, in the meantime, we did do an initial sampling program at the surface where we took uh, chip channel samples at surface and we got some very good assay results based on that. Uh, we got gold grades up to 110 grams per ton gold at the surface along with 168 gram per ton silver. Uh, of the 89 samples that we took, the average gold grade exclusive of the very high grade gold value was 3.2 grams per ton. So we see significant potential there to do additional drilling. Uh, the best drill hole we have uh, in the concession package that we have right now uh, is uh, 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 a drill assay interval of two meters of 147 grams per ton with 1.7 percent zinc and very much like Tahaman uh, it's basically a high angle vein system of shear zones uh, that are mineralized and we see carbonates only about uh, a kilometer to the south of where this drilling was done so where those veins intersect that carbonate minerals the carbonates could be significant scarn and manto style mineralization and just like Tahaman all the drill was done less than 200 meters. So we want to follow up with deeper drilling and see what those veins do uh, as they intersect the base of the volcanics and the carbonates below us. And at this point, I'll hand uh, the presentation over back to Espinosa and we'll go from there and then we'll have time for some questions. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, on this slide, we just want to share with you um, the value of Monarca compared to other companies, uh, exploration companies that are working in the Americas. And you will see we are at the very bottom of, of, of the list of those companies. And the reason behind this is basically because we have been working um, behind the scenes um, in Mexico, acquiring properties, fixing some issues that we had in the past or the company had in the past. And, uh, and now we are moving to the next phase. Uh, last year we acquired San Jose and we did the samples, we did the geophysics, and now we are moving to the um, to the drilling program. Um, part of the strategy is to raise money. So we are closing a, a product placement for about $3 million. We initially announced it for 2 million and we upsized to, to 3 million because we had a great response from the market. And actually we need to update this uh, slide very, very soon because we calculate this slide on the share price on 5 cents. Uh, today is trading at 12. So we really need to move a little bit to the left um, but we see a lot of potential to move way farther to the left on this slide. Um, so why uh, investor could be interested in investing in, 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 in Monarca? And some of the three top reasons are we have a great assets in Mexico, in Durango and, and, and Chihuahua. 
we have a program for start drilling in, 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 in Chihuahua, in San Jose, really, really soon. We don't have any kind of issue on environmental or community or anything else. It's a great project, so it's, it's going to be really, really quick, this, this drilling program, and we are expecting great results. And currently, it's still very undervaluated company. So I'm going to stop here and still probably have four minutes or something like that for a uh, few questions. So I open the floor and happy to answer uh, any question or ask Mike to answer the questions. Excellent. Thank you both. Um, maybe we'll just start by covering off the financing. So uh, when approximately would you expect that financing to close? Um, Fairly soon, we we announced it should be closed on on the twentieth of August, but uh, as far as I know, it's a, it's it's already full. So it's uh, we had a great response from the market. So so it's it's I think it's it's just in a few days, really. Great, uh, I'm sure the exchange is a little bit busy, but hopefully they won't uh, hold you up. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when uh, when do you hope to be able to get uh, drills to uh, to Hama? Yeah, uh, probably, Mike. You can you can better answer that question. Yeah, uh, I did some permitting in Chihuahua for another drilling program for another company about two years ago. It took two to three months to get the environmental permitting in. It's a very simple and straightforward process, uh, and we can expedite it because we have utilized a consultant in the past, uh, which used to work in the state government of Chihuahua. So we're looking at two or three months for permitting and then organizing the logistics and getting drilling in. I, I would think that we should be able to start drilling in November, December. Okay. And in the meantime, while the, the permitting is, is ongoing, what is some of the work that you uh, can get started on? I think that, you know, one thing that we want to do some additional follow-up work on is, and uh, in, in San Jose, uh, we want to explore the larger portion of the concession to the southeast. We do see some areas of mineralization from a distance. Uh, I don't see any old mines in the area, but the alteration continues off the survey grid. So we want to do some work to the south and see if we can justify doing additional geophysics and get some mapping in and understand the extent of the system because it goes beyond the area of the geophysical grid. Another thing that we can do is develop the drilling plan uh, in more detail for both San Lucas and Taham. And we recent re recently re-logged all of the drill trips. And so we have data for uh, putting together a, a picture, uh, cross sections and so forth of drilling in both of those properties. Excellent. Um, I know we talked about uh, San Lucas is a, an interesting project, but um, uh, hopefully there's a chance to maybe add some, some ground around that uh, current uh, property. Yeah, yeah, it, it's important to enhance that uh, concession package and maybe Carlos can address it. He's been in recent uh, contact with the owner of those concessions. Absolutely. Yeah, um, uh, Monarca Mineral used to be part of another company that split uh, way probably 10, 15 years ago. And uh, Monarca kept the silver assets, the other company kept the, the gold assets. Uh, the other company is a failed company, so we are now talking with, with them to acquire a good package of land uh, surround our properties that has a really, really good uh, potential um, are just next to our, 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 our concessions. So the plan really is to, to increase the, the land package in San Lucas and then continue working on the exploration program for a, for a larger uh, asset that could be also more interesting for another mining company in Mexico as well. Excellent. And are, are you seeing new potential opportunities in Mexico as well? Uh, yeah, I, I think well, that that's, that's something I'd like to address, Carlos, because one of the things well, I, I want to mention is we have an excellent team of people who are seasoned in Mexico. We have the country manager, Carlos Pacheco, and he is always coming up with additional potential assets to acquire in Mexico. He's a Mexican geologist with about 30 years of experience. And so he and I have looked at a lot of properties, and that's how we found San Jose. It was kind of, you know, one of these things. He thought it looked interesting. I went and looked at it. I was impressed. It was a much bigger system than anybody was giving it justice for. And so we'll continue to do that and look at additional additional uh, acquisition opportunities in Mexico. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's our, our time for today. We're very excited and, and very happy you're able to join us today.